Laker fans, what's going on? My name is Sammy Long here with Hoopstock. Today we're getting into the Lakers Nuggets Game 4 preview. I'm going to talk about three things today. Talk about can the Lakers avoid the sweep on Saturday against the Nuggets. Uh, Darvin Ham said there will be no changes to the starting lineup, which is interesting. And then I'm also talking about how I believe he's lost the team. But uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Starting with can the Lakers avoid the sweep. Um, of course, of course they can. Uh, anything is possible. I know we're down to that. Anything is possible. It sucks that we have to say that about this series, but um, it, it just it's hard to break down this series considering that every game, if every game was a blowout, if the Nuggets were winning the, the games by thirty, you'd just be like, okay, they're just that much better of a team than the Lakers, and the Lakers don't have an answer. But to have a twelve point lead in game one, a twenty point lead in game two, and then a twelve point lead in game three. And to lose all those games. I mean, if you had those odds in Vegas, I don't I don't know, you'd be moving zip codes because I don't like I don't know what it is where they can't close against this team. I, I think it's the my, my best guess it's a mental block. I mean, it seems like the Lakers, you know, they play really good basketball for the first quarter, first quarter and a half. Every one of these games seemed like the Denver's went on a little bit of a run here at the at the end of the first half, but the game's so close. Lakers have a small lead. They had, they had a four point lead going in the half yesterday. And then it just gets some money time. They just kind of fall apart. My thinking is that Denver's three through five players are so much better than the Lakers three through five players because LeBron and AD have played really well in this series. I, I criticize Anthony Davis for not demanding the ball more in the fourth quarter of game two and a couple other times in the series, but he's put up big numbers, big numbers, and LeBron has too. But the three through five in has been not very good for the Lakers. And a thing about the series heading into it was we knew the Lakers bench struggled at times, but Denver doesn't have much of a bench and they've had, they had 12 points last night. The bench hasn't really been a big factor either bench in this series and heading into that, you thought, okay, maybe, you know, this is, this is a heading into the series. You thought maybe this could be a time where the Lakers bench could step up a little bit. They haven't much, but it's not like the Denver bench has really either. Three through five for the Nuggets are so much better than the Lakers. I mean, Porter, Gordon, and KCP have just completely outballed D'Lo, Reeves, and, and Rui. I mean, Rui's had a really tough series. I mean, three points in game two, five, five points yesterday. That is just can't happen. D'Lo, obviously, with, with the with the goose egg. I mean, zero was, was, was terrible. I, I don't... There's no explaining D'Lo. I don't get it. Game one, he has 13 points. Game two, he lights it on fire, has seven threes. And then game three, he can't even scratch. I mean, that's just like, I, I don't I don't know. It's so volatile going from game to game with him. And that's a big problem. You know, you're know, you counting on D'Angelo Russell heading in the series to be your third best scorer. And he's just, he's not consistent enough to be that. It, it, it's, it's, it's too up and down. And Reeves has been that way. I mean, he he had 13 points game one. He had 22 last night, but it's really been choppy at times with him. Uh, that was the best game of the series for him. But still, I mean, the bench didn't really contribute either. I mean, Prince had seven, then we had eight, Vincent had four. So maybe a little bit more than than other games. But that, it's just a lot to ask uh, 39-year-old LeBron James and Anthony Davis to carry the load the whole game. I mean, they've outscored Jokic and Murray at times in this series. The, the 80s had success going right at Jokic at times, and LeBron's been LeBron. But I think age 39 starting to show a little bit in the sense that at the end of games, he looks really tired. And in years past, I don't think that's been the case, but especially playing games one and two, high altitude Denver, it's a tough place to play for conditioning anyway. And, you know, you can't really blame him. I mean, he's having – him and AD are having to do everything, and he's getting no help from everyone. And it seems like Jokic and Murray just kind of get, get fresh for the second half. They, they kind of feel like they jog through the first half and just wait for the Lakers to get tired and kind of let Michael Porter Jr. and KCP and Aaron Gordon, these other guys, carry the load a little bit and then just get going in the third and fourth. And it, it, it's really tough to watch because, you know, it felt like game two was kind of the last stand because, you know, to be up 20 and lose that game in Denver, thinking you're going to pick one off, that's just demoralizing. It's hard to come back from that. And, you know, especially you no know, teams ever came came back down down three games to zero. Um, so yeah, can the Lakers avoid the sweep? Of course they can, but you know, like we've said in other, other <laughs> videos and Allen's been hammering at home. I mean, you got to close out the game. LeBron's talked about it and I, I don't really know what else to say besides they got to, they got to just go do it. And it seems like the, the Nuggets just have their number and 
the, the team just seems kind of in disarray right now. It's interesting, heading my next point, that Darvin Ham is not making any starting lineup changes going in this game. I'm very critical of Darvin Ham. I don't think he should be the head coach next year. I'm not going to necessarily kill him for this because, like, who do you put in? The, the only argument for me is putting Vincent in over D'Lo. But, I mean, Dinwiddie doesn't really give you much. He had eight points last night. But, I mean, he, he's – he I mean, airballed the layup in game two. He's had some struggles – I mean, Torian and Prince, you're not putting in him in for either Reeves or D'Lo. And, you know, Vincent ha has struggled scoring, and I'm not going to kill him for that because he's still coming back from the injury. I mean, he's barely played any basketball a year. And you ask him with a week, you know, to go in the regular season to come in and ask him to shoot like he did last year in the playoffs, that, that's a tough ask. But, you know, it, it's – it's. It, I get that you want the lineup changes because, you know, D'Lo pouting at the end of the bench. I didn't understand that at all. I mean, D'Lo, what is that? Like, you had zero points. Why are you – who are you frustrated at? Darvin Ham for giving you minutes or the rest of the team? I mean, it should be the other way around. The other team's frustrated at you or the rest of the team's frustrated at you because of the lack of offensive production. And we know D'Lo doesn't really give a lot defensively. And I love D'Angelo Russell, but, but, it, but it's tough to – it's tough to sit here and justify. I, I I don't understand. Maybe he's unhappy with it, and that seems like the message he was he was he was giving um, by sitting at the end of the bench and not in the huddle. But you know, if you're gonna win the game, you got to have D'Lo play well. And obviously, he didn't in game one. Really, he played terrible in game three. But you know, the best the best game of the series so far was game two, and he had a good game. So I just don't really know who you put in. I I could hear I, you can convince me on the Gabe Vincent over D'Lo argument. I'm with that. I'd be more with it if Gabe Vincent had a little bit more time to prepare and if he had come back a month ago or a month and a half ago. But, you know, you're, just, you're not having scoring from really anywhere else. And, and D'Lo's been really bad. Rui's been terrible. And and Reeves just been kind of all right. And it, it, last game was better, but really struggled the first two games. And, I mean, AD and LeBron need help. And I, I just – the Lakers aren't a deep team, and I think that's something that really needs to be addressed. This game also, people were wondering, could Jared Vanderbilt come back? Could Christian Wood come back? Vanderbilt's not coming back, unfortunately. I don't think he ever really was. I think it was just kind of leaving it out there in case the Lakers kind of kept the series going far and if they somehow got past the Nuggets before the series started. But, you know, why would you bring him back now? The Lakers, I mean, yeah, the Lakers could come back and win the series. I could also win the lottery tomorrow. But uh, so, so I, I don't see him coming back. That that doesn't that doesn't. Why would you bring him back and possibly re re injure himself worse if he's not fully healthy to to for next year? And I mean, how effective is he going to be? He has played basketball in three months. You know, Christian Wood is questionable, so that'll be interesting to see if he plays tomorrow. Um, if he does, I wonder how many minutes he'll get. Uh, especially because Jackson Hayes is the backup. You'd think Hayes would be playing over him because he's in, he's in game shape. Anthony Davis is questionable. I think the Lakers got a lot of larger problems if he doesn't play tomorrow. I think that that could signal maybe a, a trade request is coming. Um, I, I expect him to play. I, I highly doubt he'd sit that game out because I think he'd get a lot of flack for it. But it it would be very interesting if 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 he did, doesn't play. He is questionable. So I guess we'll see, we'll see tomorrow right before game time. Getting my last point, I just think Darvin Ham can't, can't be the coach of the team. And, uh, you know, he's he's lost him. And D'Lo sitting at the end of the bench, you know, that seems like more of a D'Lo thing. But AD's comments the other day about how we look lost on both ends of the floor at times, I mean, that's a direct shot at Darvin Ham. I mean, whose job is it in any sport to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing when they're playing? And that's the head coach. Darvin Ham, it, 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 he does just seem lost, seems a little in over his head. I'm not saying the guy doesn't know basketball because he does. You know, obviously he, he's with the Bucs when they won the title – assistant head coach but I, I mean it's just not not challenging the Murray call the, the soft bump into LeBron game two it, not using all of his timeouts the team seems frustrated with him um I, I think especially after that game two you look at you look at some serious coaching mismanagement and and just just all season we've been kind of talking about the, the the Lakers get up and they look like they can play with all these teams and they go on runs and he doesn't call timeouts and he doesn't really hold guys accountable. I mean, I talked about in my last video, you know, AD should have called for the ball more in the fourth quarter. He had one shot, but then also why is Darvin Ham not calling a timeout and demanding that Anthony Davis get the ball? Why, why is that not happening as well? I mean, great head coach, you know, Michael Malone, you see him getting up in his players. I mean, I mean, like it doesn't matter who it is. Jokic, Murray, all those guys, the ham seems to kind of be kind of be just passive there. So it'd be interesting to see how the Lakers come out and look, you know, 
obviously hoping they get a game. Would love to see this streak end at 11. I'm tired of hearing about the Nuggets streak. Have some pride. Win one on your home floor. I mean, I mean, how many t- 11 straight times you lost to this team? I mean, it's it's sickening watching this. It's like a, watching a bad movie just over and over and over again. You know how it's going to end. The Lakers get up and, and they blow it. So it would really be great to see the Lakers get one just for some pride, some dignity. But, uh, you know, Lakers got to come out with energy. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how much they, they have. Darvin Ham said that everyone was irritated today after watching the film session. And they should be. It was really pretty, pretty pathetic performance in the second half and just kind of seemed like the Lakers wanted the series to end. Uh, they didn't seem to have much urgency on their home floor when, when they were up 12. Um, and when, when, when the Nuggets cut it to cut it to the tide in the third, it, was just, it just seemed like to me the game was over. It, they didn't seem like they had a lot of heart. It was like this, oh, this is happening again. And that kind of mental roadblock we've been talking about was uh, was going on there. So hopefully they come out with energy. Hopefully they get that that that, that dub tomorrow. Get a little respect. But uh, you know they got to come out early and hopefully they can they can hold a lead for for once for one time. We might see this team hold a lead and we can get on here and Alan can do a post game show. Even though the Lakers aren't probably obviously winning the series to to have some positive things to say. But, uh, you know, we'll see tomorrow. So, but just, just to wrap up here, if this is the last preview video, I really appreciate all you guys tuning in and uh, l- listening to my videos. It, it means a lot. And I want to thank Alan. He's, he's, he's been, you know, such a great mentor to me. I've been a fan of his for a long time. And for him to take me on and, and you know, kind of help me with the internship and allow me to do this and, and kind of have access to the channel and just teach me so many things on the sales side and, and doing the videos and just – Great guy. What you guys see on camera, that's really who he is in real life. He's a, he's a genuine dude. And uh, I'm just I'm just so, so thrilled to be a part of it. So uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. See you on the post game show tomorrow night. Alan will be on there. I'll be doing comments. And again, appreciate all you guys a lot. Have a good one.